Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We are doing our second video on simplifying square roots. In this video, we're going to use the prime factor method or the factor tree method. I've just written down some of the smallest prime numbers that there are to help us out. We're going to break stuff down. You don't really need to memorize these. Um, I think you'll be able to figure it out once we start breaking things down, but just here are some numbers that we're going to break things down into whenever we're simplifying square roots. Let's go ahead and look at um, our second way to do this. We did another video uh, which is about using perfect squares to simplify square roots, but here we're going to use a factor tree to do this. So for our first problem here, if I want to simplify square root 12, what we did in the other video was we found perfect squares that divide evenly into 12. What we'll do is simply create a factor tree and break 12 down. It doesn't matter what order you break this down into, you will always get the same list of prime factors as long as you break it down all the way. So here, if I look at 12, and I think of 12 as, let's say, 2 times 6, so then I go ahead and keep breaking down any branch of the tree that can be broken down further. 2 cannot be broken down into anything but 1 and 2, and so that makes it a prime number, so we go ahead and stop there. 6 can be broken down further, though, something besides 1 and 6. We can break it down into 2 times 3, and both of those are prime numbers. So what we're going to say here is that 12 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3. Everything uh, that's the end of a branch basically in my factor tree. When we're doing this with square roots, what we can do is then look at any pair of prime factors that we have, and we can pull that number outside as a single copy of that number. So since I have a pair of twos in my list of factors of 12, I can pull out a single two. Anything that does not belong to part of a pair is going to stay inside of the root. So again, my pair of twos becomes a single two on the outside, and then anything that's a single stays a single on the inside. So my reduced version of Square root 12 is 2 times square root 3. Let's do another one. Here we have square root 45. We're just going to do all the same problems we did in the other video, and if you want to watch them both and decide which method you prefer, you can do that. So let's go ahead and start our factor tree with 45. Um, thinking about something small and easy that I could figure out that goes into 45, let's say like 3. And if you get out your calculator, you figure out 3 times 15 is 45. 3 is prime, so we circle that and stop there. But 15 can be broken down further into 3 times 5. So we'll write 3 and 5, and both of those are prime. So we know all our branches are now finished. And that says then that 45 is equal to the prime factors 3 times 3 times 5. And again, because now I have a pair of 3s, anything I have a pair of, I can pull out as a single. So I get a single 3 on the outside. This 5 is not part of a pair, so it will stay on the inside of the root. And my reduced version for square root 45 is 3 times square root 5. Moving on to 30, if you remember in the video, the other video, if you watched that one, you'll notice that uh, this one's going to do something a little bit different than the other. So if I think of 30 as 3 times 10, let's say, so 3 times 10, and I can't continue with 3, but I can continue with 10. 10 is 2 times 5. So what you'll notice here, if you write out the prime factorization, and I'm writing these in order just so you can always kind of see pairs together. So I'm going to put the 2 in front, the 3 next, and then the 5 at the end, just kind of going up from smallest to biggest. You'll notice that nothing has a pair, right? There are no pairs here. So what that tells me is nothing can be pulled out of the root. Square root 30 is as simplified as it will get, and we would just leave this as square root 30. Again, no pairs, can't pull anything outside. Simplifying square root 72, so if I have 72, and let's say, you know, 72 is getting a little bit bigger, so I'm not sure, just start pulling out, you know, any small number will work. Well, I see this is even, so I know it's 2 times something, so I figure out it's 2 times 36, and so I'll keep the 2. Um, this is still an even number, so I can go ahead and say it's 2 times something else again. It turns out it's 2 times 18. 18 is still an even number, so I can say it's 2 times something. We know it's 2 times 9, I hope. And then 9, the only way to really break that down with prime numbers is going to be 3 and 3. Okay, so we've got our tree for 72. Remember, we stop at prime numbers. So 2 
times two times two, we have three copies of that. And then I have two copies of three there at the bottom. So that's everything from my tree. You'll notice I have a pair of twos and I don't have enough to make another pair of twos. Uh, so I can only pull out one copy of two, but I do have a pair of threes, so I can also pull out a three on the outside. So that'll be times a three on the outside. And since this two is not part of a pair, it has to stay under the root inside. So I get a two and a three on the outside, which when I multiply that is gonna give me six. So the simplified version of this one is six times square root two. Square root of 20, this one's not too bad, right? 20 should be pretty easy. Uh, let's say we go with like 10 times two. So that might have been different than what you picked, I don't know, but 10 times two, can't go any further with two. Uh, with 10, I could go two times five. Um, and again, I'm gonna write these in order. So 20 equals two times two times five, everything that I've circled in my tree. I have a pair of twos, I can pull out a single two then. And this five is not part of a pair, so it goes underneath the root still. Two times square root five is our answer for that one. Moving up just a little bit bigger now, 324, we did this one in the previous video. Um, we split this up a little bit differently. I'm just gonna start by pulling out two because I know that it's an even number. So uh, two times something gives me that, half of that is 162. Um, and then this is still even, so I'll say two times half of that, 81. If not, you can always divide by whatever you decide, right? So in your calculator, if you're like, 162 is two times something, then do 162 divide by two, and that'll give you that number there, 81, right? Um, 81, it splits up to nine and nine, right? We could go ahead and circle the nines, but we said we were gonna make these prime factors, so let's keep going. Three times three, I do have a pair of nines there, right? Some of you might see a little shortcut there. We're gonna go ahead and stick with our method so we don't confuse anybody here. So 324 prime factorization is gonna be two times two times three times three times three times three. So I have two copies of two, four copies of three. Here I have a pair of twos. So a two would come on the outside and I have a pair of threes. So times another three on the outside. And then I have another pair of threes, so times another three on the outside. And what is left inside of the square root? The answer is nothing is left inside of the root. It turns out everything comes out. So there is no more square root. And it turns out two times three times three is actually 18. And if you try in your calculator to find out what the square root of 324 is, it turns out it is exactly 18. So sometimes if everything comes out as a pair, it turns out you had a perfect square to begin with. So square root of 324 is 18. With this monster that I introduced at the end of the other video, 2535, and we said, well, maybe you wanna try that uh, factor tree method because 2535 is it's pretty crazy to see what might be a perfect square, right? That goes into 2535. With this method, I just have to figure out something that goes into 2535. So, you know, you start punching buttons on a few things, divide by two, divide by three, divide by whatever. Um, you know, you might see this ends in a five, so you divide by five. You might have checked three first and gotten that 2535 is three times 845. So it just depends on what you check first. Don't worry if you start with different numbers than me or someone else when you're doing these problems you will end up with the same thing eventually. Um, so let's say you know, you're know you at 845, you're like, I don't know, so um, it ends in five, I know it's gotta be five times something, so you go ahead and you pull out five, and five times something gives me that. Remember, you can always take your 845 and divide by whatever you wrote down. That'll give you the other thing. Here it's 169 when you do that. 169, the only thing you're really gonna find there is 13 and 13. Those are prime, bigger prime numbers, right? But those are prime, so 2,535 is equal to, if I write in order, three times five times 13 times 13. That gives me a pair of 13s only, so that's the only thing I can pull out. And then the three and the five need to stay inside, three times five, right? So we wanna go ahead and say what that is. That inside is gonna be 15, so we have 
the square root of 2535 reduces to 13 times square root 15. Okay, we really like this method. Uh, this seems to work for uh, people just a little bit better maybe than the perfect square method. If you're already good with the perfect square method, you know your perfect squares really well. The other method may work great for you. You might want to check that video out. Um, but the factor tree, it's a little less picky of a method, and so we like this for breaking things down, even though it may take just a little bit longer. So hopefully one of these helps you out.